And welcome back to my channel. Today is another day of treasure talk and today our topic is comparing ourselves to others. After seeking forgiveness for our sins and our unrighteous deeds and forgiving others, um, it's time that we leave behind those urges of trying to compare ourselves to others or trying to become others. You might look at me and think, I don't do that. I don't know what she's going on about, so this is not my thing. No, wait until the end and then make that judgment. So let's go into it. When I say compare ourselves to others, there are several things that we can be doing that falls under the bracket of trying to compare ourselves to others. So, I will say a little bit and then you might see that you fall into that category or you have done it before. Okay, so number one, you make that occasional comment of, I'm 30, my cousin is 26, but she's married, she's got kids, and I'm still here. I don't have a, 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 a stable relationship, I have no children. That's a form of comparing, comparing yourself to someone. Or, why is she... Be, uh, why is she um, so successful in her business and why is it that my business is not going on so well? That's you trying to compare yourself to the other. Or you have transformed totally into the person you admire. And this person can be your friend, it can be a random person, but literally you've adapted the way they talk, the way they look, uh, the way they behave, that's you trying to compare or you comparing yourself to another. Or you uh, look at someone and because that person is doing so well, you all of a sudden don't like that person. You, <laughs> how would I say it? I won't even say hater because we're going to be talking about <laughs> trying to label people. But um, you just dislike the individual. You don't like to talk to the person. You don't like to be close to that person just because you want what that person has and you sit in your house and you think about the things that that person has just because you're the same age or the person is younger than you and you're not liking that individual just because she has that something that you want or that's something that you are um, uh, striving for. That's all forms of comparing yourself to another. Now the Bible says that if you compare yourself to the next person, to another, you are without understanding. And that's my baseline scripture for today. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who condemn themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without doubt. So if you do those little things that I just said previously, you are without doubt and without understanding. So if you compare yourself, if you are a copycat of someone you admire, if you rush yourself to buy what the next person has, you are without understanding. As Christians, we should, we should be full of understanding because our Bible is our guide. Our Bible is our source of advice, support, um, lifeline, it's everything to us. So as a Christian, if you are comparing yourself to the next person, you are without doubt, which means that you're not spiritually filled. And I believe as a Christian, you should be spiritually filled. You should be seeking God and his kingdom and um, his promise, his uh, support and guidance and advice in the Bible rather than trying to seek what the other has. You are then without understanding. Not all that glitters is gold. We know that uh, there's jewelry out there that we can buy. It's just gold plated. It's not gold. It's gold plated. After a while, it loses its beauty. So not all that we see that an individual next to you has can or is 
a blessing. Let's be real. Okay? God knows who you are. And he made you who you are for a reason. Okay? Biblically, I can't um, support the saying of there's two of each individual in, in the world. I can't. Biblically, I'm try I've been trying to look for <laughs> I've been trying to look for something that can support that uh, saying. But I couldn't find anything. Yes, God created two people on this world, Adam and Eve, but biblically, there is n it's nowhere stated that there is, there's two of every individual <laughs> in this world. So, please, know that what Linda is doing was written, planned by God for Linda. What you are doing and what you are going through was engineered planned created for you by God okay if you see the next person succeeding in business right just because that person is succeeding in business doesn't mean that God has written or planned you to be in business and maybe that's why your business is not doing well because God didn't engineer business a life of business for you right because somebody is a scholar god blessed the individual with the brains to become a scholar to be a professor to be a you know scientist psychologist doesn't mean that you are or were engineered to do the same thing okay and for that reason doesn't mean that you need to hate on that person but we will talk about labeling people in another um, uh, webisode. But that doesn't mean that you should fall out with that individual just because that individual has what you want. Okay? Sandra is 25 and is married and has a kid. And you're 30. And you're not married. And you haven't got a kid. And for that reason, you keep on asking, so God, why me? God, when am I going to have my husband? When am I going to have my happy family? Do you know what Sandra is going through? When the clothes, when the doors are closed? When she is in her house? Do you know what Sandra is going through? Just because Sandra looks all put together when you see her or happy with her husband and her kids does not mean that that's what's going on behind closed doors. Okay? Um... Just because someone looks beautiful, hey, someone looks beautiful in Brazilian hair, in Peruvian hair, in Mongolian hair, you are f killing yourself. Literally, you don't have the finances, but you are forcing yourself to get that same hair to look as good as Linda, Angela, Sandra is looking like. Let's be real. Let's be real. I go by that saying, cut your coat by your size. I go by that saying. Because I believe that that saying ties in with 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12. Because if you cut your coat by your size, it means that you know what you're doing. You understand what you're doing. Right? When you cut your coat bigger than your size... It kind of seems like you do not, you don't have any understanding of what you're doing. So I support that saying, and I hope that I am not having a go at you. But but in but on the contrary, I am motivating you to stay within your lane and wait upon God to give you what He has promised in your life. Okay, um, as I said, no two people have the same destiny. No two people have the same storyline. Okay, it can be very similar, but it's not the same. Okay, we know about Jacob and Esau in the Bible. They were identical twins. They were identical twins, only one had, one was more hairier than the other. The storyline of the two was very different. And because the younger one 
wanted to be just like the older one, the one that was more favored by their dad, we all know what happened, okay? It's not um, a surprise that we as human, as Christians, we sometimes like to compare ourselves to others. I won't say that I've never looked at someone and said, oh, I would love to be that person. I won't. I can't say that because every individual has been in that, situ in that situation once or twice in their life. But it is necessary that from today onwards, and after you've watched this, you would take your time. You would take your time and focus on God and just go on your knees and ask God to give you what he has promised and written in your book of life. And not what is going on in Jacqueline's book of life or Beatrice's book of life. Let's not feel threatened by what someone has. Let's not feel the need to not talk to an individual just because that individual has what we have. Let's please, please not do that, okay? The, the grass is not greener on the other side, okay? The grass is not greener at the other side. And I, will, I, will, I want you to keep that in mind. Not all that glare is gold. The grass is not greener on the other side. Alright? Every individual has their struggles, their um, issues they go through in life. Just because that person has gotten to that certain place that you want to stop at doesn't mean that you are not going to get there. It might take a while. But you're definitely going to get where you want to get. Please do not, in 2014, compare yourself to the next person. Alright? And that's all that I wanted to do. I wanted to plead with you that in 2014, you'll be a better perfect person. And in 2014, you will not compare yourself to anyone. You will be content, appreciative, thankful for what you have. Because... You know what? My inspirational quote says that the Lord thinks of us in a good manner. That he gives us hope and, and a future. And I'll read that quote for you and I'll give you the quote in a second. But that's what we should know and trust in. That God does everything in his perfect timing. He does everything perfect. He does everything um, fully. He doesn't give you incomplete things. So let us know that and maybe stay with that. So our inspirational quote for today, I've already kind of said what it is, but it's from Jeremiah 29 verse 11 and it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and hope. Wait upon God's appointed time. Stop becoming a copycat of an individual you admire or an individual you think is better than you or stop comparing yourself. Stop looking at the individual and thinking that individual has it better than me. Stop. And stop killing yourself. And when I say killing, not literally killing yourself, but um, killing yourself in a way of finances, of behaviors, of attitude. Just to become like that individual. Just because that person is uh, wearing Louis Vuittons, is carrying Chanel bags, is wearing diamonds and golds, doesn't mean that you have to do that. And maybe, maybe all of that is actually in your book of life, but it is not yet there. It is actually in there maybe but you're not there yet so let's just be patient let's just be patient let's focus and fix our eyes our hearts on the promise of God in our lives let's laugh off all the insecurities all the um, down days that might that you might yeah that you might encounter this year um, ignore all of those negativities and believe that God knows 
God knows where you are and he knows the plans that he has for you. Plans of good future and plans of, of hope. Let us remember this scripture and let us be motivated to always, always remember that God's time is the best. There's a season for everything and that's been said in it. Ecclesiastics, there's a, there's a season for everything. So just because someone is blossoming now doesn't mean that maybe he's going to be she or he is going to be blossoming 10 years from now. And just because you are still a seed doesn't mean that you are not going to become a beautiful flower. So let us seek the kingdom of the God first. And let us do his ways, his will, and not expect anything. Because when we not expect things and we get them, it's... A much better surprise and it's it gives you a much better feeling than expecting that this is what you're gonna get just because that Amma has what she's got and you are expecting to get what Amma has maybe that's not for you so let us know what we want by focusing on God and seeking his will and doing his will thank you for watching today and I hope that you are not upset with me <laughs> but rather you're happy that I've inspired you to be happy and appreciative of what you have and um, that you'll focus on God and then that you trust that God has thoughts of good and hope and of a good future for you. God bless you for watching and see you next Tuesday with another webisode. Bye!